Honey, it's family hour. There must be something on. Oh, wow! Candy critters! Oh! Oh, great! It's Monsters, our favorite show. Shh, it's starting. Bizarre, huh? Yeah. Everyone thinks that this place is possessed. Come on, let's check it out. See? It's exactly where Matthew left it the last time. So you sure your friends won't mind me coming along tonight? Of course not. It'll be fun. Beverly takes some getting used to, but Matthew thinks you're kind of cool. Well, he doesn't really know me, does he? Well, whose fault is that, Mr. Distant? Paul the Dreamer. That's what they call you, you know. Oh, who? All the girls. I think they think you're mental or something. I think it's part of your appeal. Okay. Yeah, I just, I got a splinter. Okay, well, we better get going, because I don't want anyone to see us hanging around. Yeah, hey, Jody. Yeah? Who lived here before people said it was haunted? He was just some guy who, who built this place. He killed himself out back by Becker's Pond. This place is, uh, it's weird. Yeah, yeah, it is. But that's what's so great about it, you know? It, it helps with the mood. I remember last time it got so scary, I had trouble sleeping all night. We're gonna get in trouble. Would you relax? I've broken this place dozens of times when I was a kid, okay? Somebody cares. Jody's friend gives me the creeps. He's weird. Oh, Paul? No, he's okay. He's just shy. Paul. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. First guy lights a match, starts telling a story. When the match burns down, he stops. And the next person in line continues where he left off. Okay, um, I don't know the story. Well, there is no story. Can we make it up as we go along? <sighs> okay. I'll start. <laughs> it's been 50 years now, 50 years since he threw himself in the Becker's Pond, taking his own life, ending his misery forever. His name. Herbert Waverly. Oh, 
Uncle Herbie was very rich and pretty damn handsome to boot. He could have almost any woman he wanted, except the one woman he wanted. He couldn't have. Wait, what, are, what, are, what, are, what are you doing? This is supposed to be scary. It's my turn. I'll say what I want. She lived on the other side of town, the wife of a prominent politician and gentleman farmer. Her name was <laughs> Ethel. Ethel Schwartz. Herbert and Ethel met on the sly for several months. Ethel would sneak out of her house for their illicit meetings at the pond. But soon, rumors began spreading around town. And before long, they reached the ears of Ethel's jealous husband. One night, the politician locked his wife in the attic room. And he set out for the pond to lie in wait for Herbert. There was a terrible fight. A terrible fight. But Herbert's bigger, stronger. Grabs the guy by the throat, drags him down to the edge of the pond, forces his head beneath the water. His lungs fill with the still rancid waters of the pond, and soon he's dead. Rain is already beginning to fall as Herbert hastily buries the body in a shallow grave, hops on his horse, and gallops off. Claim his beloved. Now the rain is coming down in torrents as Herbert pushes onward, 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 and at last he sees the home of his lover in the distance. It's dark, except for the light in the attic room. He sees her form in the window. Under the gable, she stares out into the black night. tugs on the reins and he drags his horse around and he digs his heels into her side and suddenly there's a bolt of lightning and a crash of thunder. And the horse whinnies, rears, throwing Herbert from the saddle and twisting in midair, he sees it. He's, he's heading right for it. It's the sharp blades of an idle threshing machine. <laughs> Screams as the sharp blades cut into his face, three deep cuts, skin split, exposed bone and, and, and muscle and, and blood. Pain. Pain. So much pain. And so close, so close he can hear the clock in the farmhouse toll the midnight hour. Guy, who set the clock? I didn't do it. Well, someone screwed around with it. That clock was stopped. Well, maybe it was mass hypnosis or something. The hands were nowhere near 12. I noticed that when we came in. Okay, so maybe the spring was wound or the thunder shook it loose. I want to go home, Matthew. Come on, it's starting to get good. I don't care. I want to go. Okay. But first, we'll vote. Jody. Paul. We started it. Guess we should finish it. Herbert Waverly managed to pry himself free from those horrible steel blades, his broken leg dragging behind him, and blood 
pouring out of the open wounds of his face. He started his long journey home on foot. Herbert walked home. Here. Collapsed in the doorway. Near death. Herbert survives. But he lives the rest of his life as an embittered old man. His face is so horribly scarred. So horribly scarred and twisted that no one can bear to look at him without turning away in horror. Even his beloved Ethel can't bear to look at him. Each day he grew meaner, angrier. His disposition kept his wounds from healing properly and he just became more and more disfigured. Until he could no longer even look at himself without screaming in agony and turning away. He had all the mirrors in the house torn from their walls and stored in an upstairs bedroom that he never entered. Finally, in despair, crazed with the loneliness, filled his pockets with stones, threw himself into Becker's pond. His body died, but his hate lived on. And it's nights like these that Herbert Waverly crawls out of the muck of Becker's Pond and returns home, following the blood left behind on that rainy, rainy Friday night. You can still see the blood on the road out there. When the pavement's wet and the moonlight hits it just right. People say to stay away from Becker's Pond on nights like these. But most of all, stay out of the Waverly Mansion. Because Herbert Waverly will kill anything that gets in his way. If you see him run, run as fast as you can and don't look back. soul from your body. He's out there. He's through the gate. He's dragging himself up the sidewalk. He's at the door. He knows we're in here. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Just stop it! Come on, Bev. It's just a story. I'm telling you, I heard somebody outside! Bev, come on! There's nobody out there. Nobody out there.
Miles Magnus. Do you think they've heard of me? Oh, everybody who likes horror knows you. You've got to be about one of the biggest selling writers in the world. Well, the Bible still outsells me.
books in your bedroom. I, I do all my work here. Like Proust. Beg your pardon? French writer. Marcel Proust. Mm. He used to write in bed. You want a beer? Sure. I didn't know you wrote Curse of the Mutilated. Well, in my early days, before I was famous, my publisher had me put some of the stronger stuff under a pen name. Before. I'm just like everybody else. No, you're nicer. Then it's lucky we met. What are you working on? Oh, uh, just the usual thing, I guess. <gasps> you're too fast. Slow down. I really like you a lot, Miles. Don't you like me? I think you're incredibly beautiful and wonderful and terrific. <laughs> void in my life. I think you're the only person in the world right now that could fill it. God, I love the way you talk. Nobody, nobody ever talked to me that way before. Now the guys back home, they would just say things like, let's fool around. Hurry up, I ain't got all night. Really crude things. I would never talk to you that way, Barbara. You mean too much to me. I respect you too much. Just lay back on the bed. Relax. Everything. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm well, just pulling the sheets down. Oh. I don't want to get them wrinkled. <laughs> Good. <laughs> 
promised I'd feed you tonight. Nice place. Now, where are these 200 books? Over there. You want a beer? No, thanks. Wow. Mange mon savo in French. Eat my brains out. I really like you a lot, Vicky. As soon as I saw you at the buffet table eating shrimp, I wanted to ask you up for a drink. I was really afraid you wouldn't come. Death tongue in German is Totenzungen. How neat. I think you're incredibly beautiful and wonderful and terrific. Uh, look, uh, Miles. Let's cut through the romantic garbage. You see, I have this instinct about people. A psychic sort of thing. And there's something going on behind your eyes, some kind of inner secret life that really excites me. So that's why I came up here, to find out what it is that makes you tick. I'm just an ordinary guy. No, I'm never wrong about these things. There's something very special about you, something that made you different from the last 200 guys who tried to pick me up at publication parties. You're totally wrong, Vicky. I'm just like everybody else. The soundless scream is like an ice pick in my skull. The unfulfilled desire breaking over my head like a tidal wave of blood. Give me that. No, wait, this is good. How many times have I tried to run away, but always the master calls me back to offer another sacrifice at his cruel altar? I'll bet there's more than just one page. Uh-huh. Ooh. Scribble, scribble, scribble. You can't see it, it's personal. Oh, come on. Don't be shy. I'm a writer, too. You never said that before. You never asked me. There's a lot of weird fantasies in here. Not the kind of stuff you expect other people to understand. Don't be silly. Can it be any weirder than I drink your skin or <laughs> scream of the tortured? Ooh. <laughs> what is this, a waterbed? Sort of. It's kind of a, a new thing. Here, lean against this pillow. Thank you. I like the way it starts. For some time now, I have been enslaved by a hideous alien creature. I like it when it gets right to the Try not to waste any time. The strange psychological bond keeps me prisoner. It may be telepathic, I cannot say for sure. All I know is the thought of leaving my master fills me with the deepest dread. You have a great imagination. It's just some words I jotted down. I've read all your stuff, and this is the best yet. Thank you. When I think that if I hadn't been exploring that old abandoned house, I never would have met my mess. What's that? It must have been that uh, cheap, fizzy champagne the publisher buys. No, it wasn't you. I think your water bed is springing a leak. Uh, I'll drain it next week. My pajamas or something. Uh, these pajamas must be real cozy. Cold nights. Ha 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 ha! The cleaning lady was looking for her shoes last week. Had to lend her a pair of my sneakers to go home in. All we have to do is find the other one and she'll be so happy. Yeah, right. Well, let's just forget about the cleaning lady. Uh, Tell me about you. Well. What kind of stuff do you write? You know, I think I'd really like that beer now. One beer, ice cold, coming right up. 
Uh, I never drink or eat anything cold. Could you run out under the hot water tap for a moment? No problem. I bet I can guess what you write. You do those romance books. How'd you guess? You look like the pictures of the authors they put on the back cover. You know, these women who are glamorous and intelligent at the same time. my diary. That means she knows about us. I can't let her tell. People would come here and separate us. You wouldn't like that. You couldn't tell me your dreams anymore. She thinks she's smart because I don't know her last name. But I'm smarter. I'll go to a bookstore and look up the names of all the people who write romance books. I'll find her. <laughs> Hello? Miles, it's me, Vicky. I've got to see you. You took something that belongs to me. The manuscript. It's fascinating. That's what I want to see you about. I'm at 55 Atwell Place, apartment three. I'll be waiting. I just had to finish it. I wasn't thinking. I was reacting emotionally. It was like an electric shock went through me. Uh, well, sometimes a book can do that to you. You could have asked to borrow it. Oh, you wouldn't have lent it to me anyway. It's not in there, by the way. I was struck by how much it was like the things that I write. The same obsessive, insane love, a longing to escape, combined with a hopeless submission to the master. Only in my things, the main character is a young girl, and the master is a handsome English nobleman. Look, I thought perhaps we could do a rewrite together. Set in the moors of Cromwell. You want to collaborate with me? Yes, I think we'd make a good team. What's the matter? You find romance drying up? I've written dozens of books. I'm in a rut. I need a breakthrough. Horror's where the action is. You've given me no reason to trust you. I apologized already. Don't torture me. OK. Suppose we talk about working together. Do I get my manuscript back? Yes, uh, of course. I was curious about your hero. Where will he end up? I don't know. The story isn't finished. Doesn't he ever try and get away? Why can't he just walk out on his master? You don't understand. He's tried a thousand times. But he needs the master. But maybe he could find another relationship. A different kind. Different how? Like with an equal. Not a master. I don't think it would work out. But how does he know it won't work out if he doesn't try and make it work out? Let's go to my place. OK. But later, I want to spend the night here. Whatever you want. You just relax there on the bed. I'll be back. 
in a minute. You know what's missing in your book? Your character never runs into anyone else who has a master like his own. Because there's only one master. But isn't that odd? If there's one of them, there's bound to be others. The master's very old. One of an ancient race that lived on the earth before anything else did. The master remembers the dinosaurs and the ice age and hairy little monkeys coming down out of the tree and inventing fire and the sinking of Atlantis and the building of the pyramids. The other old great ones died out. The master's the last one. And how does your hero know this? Because the master tells him at night when they're alone together in his dreams. Hmm. And maybe the master lies. But the master never lies. Everything he says is true because he is the truth. If he could lie, he would not be the master. And I... I mean, the hero would not serve him. I'm sorry. I guess I take my work a little seriously sometimes. I'm a little spooked. I'm okay now. The way you talk about that stuff, it seems so real to you, like you didn't make it up. Don't be silly. It's all just fantasy, just words on paper. You're very special, Miles. You're very special too, Vicky. What can I do to make everything all right? Get me an ice cold beer, will you? You want it out of a can or in a glass? Out of the can, but get one for yourself too. Right, Miles. Probably wouldn't have worked out. yourself a little accident. Uh, mind if I... Are you gonna keep him on the doorstep, Pa? Bring him on in. I hate to impose this hour of the night. You see, 
but my car. Cloud first. I'm not uncommon this time of the year. It takes the tourists by surprise, especially that hairpin curve. I couldn't see two feet in front of me. Take his coat, Pop. Oh. Take his hat. Don't look like no tourist to me. Well, the car's total, that's for sure. I dread to think what Mr. Snodgrass will say. It belongs to the company. Company? Why, yes. Uh, you folks are looking at Howard Philbean, regional retail rep for Peabody and Snodgrass. Salesman. Pa, don't much cotton to salesman. Well, of course, Howard Philbean is not your average bull in the china shop blowhard. See, the secret of my success is the soft sell. Never hit him over the head with your bill of goods. Cajole him. Start him off with a gag. You know, a, a knee slapper. Uh, did you hear the one about? <laughs> pa says a drummer's a drummer. Showing off their white teeth. Flashy suits. Cracking them stale jokes. Smutty jokes. Whiskey breath. Well, pull up a chair, Pa, before his legs give out. There you go. Cup of coffee. Steady your nerves. This here is Cousin Daniel and his family, of course. And over here's my nephew, Tully, before he went bald-headed. <laughs> oh, oh, it's Aunt Eula from St. Louis. Guess who this is? I haven't a clue. That's Ma's brother, Elmo, the Merchant Marine. You mean you don't spark the family resemblance? Anybody comes through that door says to Ma, that's Elmo in a dress. Well, it's getting kind of late. <sighs> the time I pushed on, I'd be grateful for a lift to town. Town? Yes, Aurora. I was due in two hours ago. Only thing we got with wheels, son, is a threshing machine. Well, maybe I could use your telephone. Got no phone, neither. Pa's dead set again. Him. Pesky nuisances. Oh, you Poor wife will be fit to be tied. Well, I haven't had the pleasure of holy matrimony just as yet. Oh, well, show him Lucy. Lucy's a little girl. Oh, Lucy ain't so little no more, Pa. Who? She ain't little in any direction. Not that this picture does her justice, my child. People of beauty contest winners, some said. It was. She's just our Lucy. More or less. Well, how are we gonna get you to Aurora, young fella? Hmm? Well, under the circumstances, what can I do but bow to the fates? It looks like I'm stuck here. Well, now, let's cogitate on that. Over here is where Ma and me sleep, and that's a tight squeeze for the two of us. You see, uh, there's not much room here. Uh, this was an old barn before Dad rebuilt it. Did a nice job, too. Yes, there's upstairs, that's a fact. Except that's where... Where we keep Lucy. Well, I'll be quiet as a mouse. Oh, quiet's not the question. Why, there's only one bed up there. Well, I'll sleep on the edge. She won't even know I'm there. I'm one for hospitality, but... Pa, maybe, just maybe, we could rig up a modesty sheet between them. Uh, that is, if this gentleman can be trusted. I don't know, Ma. Look at them beady little eyes. Well, Howard Philbean is nothing if he's not trustworthy. Oh, and look how he's just shivering with the damp. Well... I guess any man's worth the benefit of the doubt. Now, them accommodations upstairs ain't exactly deluxe, but if they suit you. Pass! Out of them wet clothes. Every stitch. Good night. Sleep tight. 
Don't let the bed bugs bite. Yourself. Your pa will kill me if he hears us. You undressed? Almost. Well, quick, into bed. Scent. Gardenia. Freshens the air. <laughs> you ain't allergic. I caught a chill in the rain. I hope I don't keep you awake all night. Most of them like gardenia. Most of who? That is to say, most people do. Was that you under the sheet? Cold feet. Sorry. Cold feet, warm heart. That's what Charlie said. Charlie. Long gone, but not forgot. You must have been on your way to Aurora. No one ever comes to this old holler on purpose. Well, as a matter of fact, I... I know. I know that darn hairpin curve. You're one of them traveling salesmen, ain't you? The firm of Peabody and Snodgrass. First in our field. This physical year, we had the best fourth quarter in the history of the company. Thanks in no small part to the talents of yours truly, Howard Philby. I'm Lucy. You have an awful sweet voice, Lucy. I think you're just trying to flatter me, Mr. Philby. And it just may work. Well, you know, a man gets awful lonely on the road, Lucy, you know. Aurora one day, Livonia the next. Nobody to talk to, nobody to... Know what you're thinking? Man needs that help. <laughs> All by himself in a car, selling his heart out with nobody to. You sound real lovely, Lucy. I wish you'd let me look at you. I mean, what's the harm in one little look? You're very lovely looking, Lucy. Am I everything you expected? More, much more. Of course, the pleasures of the flesh are mere transitory pleasures. It's the things of the spirit that are truly important. I couldn't say it better myself, Lucy. Lower the sheet, please, lower the sheet. It's the beauty inside that matters, don't you think? I do. Lower the sheet. Do you like my hair, Howard? It's awful long. Like an angel's. Don't touch now. Ma says my shoulders are as soft as... Very soft. And I always have been quite slim-waisted, as you can see. Your perfection, more than I ever dreamed. How's a girl to know if a man's talking with his heart or with his baser instincts? How's a girl to know, Howard? How? Lucy, I love you. Don't say it if you don't mean it. I love you more than... You'll break my heart. You'll have your way with me, and then you'll leave your poor Lucy in the cold light of day. Just like... I would love you forever. Yes, but would you honor me? I would. Would you cherish me? I would. Would you obey me? I would. Then you must kiss me, Howard, and make an honest woman out of me. I must. And then we'll go downstairs, Howard. Uh-huh. And we'll tell Ma and Pa the wonderful news. Uh-huh. Oh, I do so love June weddings. But I don't know as I could wait that long. How about you, Howard? Anything you say, Lucy. Then you may kiss me, Howard. But you may not touch me. One kiss. One gentle, loving kiss. Please. Patience, Howard. One little kiss. And no touching. Uh -huh. Say it, Howard. I love you, Lucy. 
no. Say the no touching part. Lucy, I won't touch you, I swear. You may kiss the No, Howard, no, please. Ah. Oh, Howard, now look what you've gone and done. Maybe he ain't so bad, this one. Don't get your hopes up. I say they're all no damn good. Pushy, fast-talking con men. This one's right retiring. Uh, showing his big white smile. He's got nice teeth. I wouldn't trust him no further than I could toss him. I don't want to hear no more. Damn salesman. Glad handed you while they fob off their useless gadgets and gizmos. We never even asked him what he had in that sample case. Knickknacks, doodads, gizmos. Jump. We ought to give him a chance, Pa, for Lucy's sake. Ah. That girl ain't never gonna find nobody to make an honest woman of her. I don't care how much of that gardenia junk she sprays around the place. Now, where were we? Oh, yes, I remember. You don't think, I mean, you actually don't think, you can't expect me. A promise is a promise. And we in these parts, we don't take lightly to, to gentlemen who break those types of commitments. I had another boat. His name was Charlie. Talk real nice. Traveling salesman just like you. Five years this month. There was a storm that night, too. The night Charlie had his accident. You listening to me, honey? I'm listening. Oh, Charlie was so handsome. Brown eyes, jet black hair, the color of crow's feathers. If only he'd have been true in his affections, none of this would have happened. I'm sorry, Lucy. But no sooner than he got what he wanted than he betrayed me, just like you. <laughs> Don't you know Charlie tried the same fool thing when I told him what was expected of him? That in this neck of the woods, when a fellow and a girl spend the night together, they're bound to each other for life. Any weddings tonight, Lucy? <laughs> Should we get out the shoes and the rice? <laughs> you asked for her, you got her. Looks to me like she got him. <laughs> oh, hush, you two. Come back to bed, Charlie. Is that any way to behave if I think you didn't care for me no more? I care for you, Lucy. I care for you. Didn't work no better for Charlie. One of these days, Pa's just gonna have to get off his rocker and fix that sash. I gotta get out of here. It's just what Charlie said. See how light you are? Peas and Pa. It's just that I got a lot of territory to cover, that's all. You're just running out on me. As soon as you find out I'm not as girlish as you thought I was. You twisted my words. and dumb. Oh. It's crazy to fret and fuss. Charlie learned that. <sighs> Every one of them salesmen had a bill of goods to peddle. Charlie's line was cut, Louie. How many were there? In all? Oh, honey, I lost count. Main thing is, they failed me. One after another. Beginning with the first one. What's that? When Pa made sure there was no way out for Charlie, he went outside and he backed up the threshing machine right under the bailing chute. That's how mad Pa was that night. 
Waiting for you, mister. Come and get it. Lucy, it's not too late. We can still get married. See? Your mom and pa are down there waiting for us. That's just what Charlie did. Sacrificed me to save himself. Like every last treacherous one that came after him. Year after year. Each one betraying me in turn so that I can't. Rest in peace. Will never. Until one, just one, proves true. Lucy, I'm that one, the man you've been searching for. It's not too late. I I'll marry you. I I'll give up my wandering. I'll settle down here in the city. You name it. Will you? You wouldn't be afraid? Even if I'm not the girl I was? Oh, sweetheart, you have an inner beauty. I do? Yes, I mean, and that's far more beautiful than those more transitory beauties. All I ask for is a chance. What can I do to prove myself to you? Kiss me, kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. No, kiss me, 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 He was a Bible salesman. He might have made a good son-in-law, too. Oh, well. Who knows? Maybe next time. Well, God darn shame about that last one, Pa. He might have turned out to be the right one, after all. No good dwelling on the past, Ma. Oh, he sure was cute, though. Mother? Sheila, you scared me half to death. You should have called before you came up. I'm sorry, you're right. I should have. I'll just come back some other time. Oh, don't be silly. Come over here. Give your old mother a hug. So glad to see you, child. Good Lord, what has he done to you now? Ah, I sold her into white slavery. But you know, I think I'm gonna renege on the sale. <laughs> I'd be a fool to let this girl go for a mere two million dollars. I should have known you were here. The only time my daughter comes to see me is when you bring her. <sighs> Come on, Ma. You know that's not true. Could we go inside the house, Mother? It's so hot and sticky in here. They like it that way, so do I. Oh, all right. 
French bakery near us? It's Black Forest, your favorite. I've decided I'm on a diet. Mother, please. Nelson just wants to be part of the family. Right. I mean, family is the most important thing in the world to me. I mean, even if we don't always see eye to eye, I never forget that. I mean, we should come up more often. Just say what you came to say, Nelson. Well, we've had a little emergency recently, and it, it's hit us pretty hard. How much do you want? Well, we're 8,000 in the red, but 5,000 would take care of us for now. The answer's no. What? You heard me. I'm through paying for your gambling and your womanizing. You'll not get one more penny from me. Ma, I don't think that you completely understand the problem. I understand perfectly. And Sheila and I discussed it. And she agreed that I should ask you for a loan. Yes, that's right. We both agreed. Given the circumstances, I will have to disregard my daughter's wishes. Well, how do you think your daughter's going to feel when her own mother abandons her like this? She's a smart girl. She knows why I'm doing it. But if you don't help us, we'll have to move out of the condo. We'll have to get a cheap apartment in some bad neighborhood somewhere. I mean, Sheila's going to have to walk down unsafe streets every night. There's nothing more unsafe than her addiction to you. Mother. Hush, child. Are you forgetting? That I'm Sheila's husband. If I'm not happy, chances are she's not going to be happy. In fact, I can guarantee that. So it's finally come down to that. I knew it would sooner or later. The answer's still no. You selfish old vulture! You'll help us, or you're going to regret it. Do you hear me? Nelson, please! Don't you ever, ever strike my daughter! He got out of your wheelchair. You picked him up. How did you do that? It's the enzymes in the pulp. The pulp? From the melons found they contain an enzyme which super energizes the human muscle tissue. <coughs> One glass of melon juice will charge up even an old bird like me. What a pity the effect doesn't last. I'm not used to exerting myself to this extent. Run to the hothouse and get me another glass of juice. Maybe I'll prevent her from bringing you that juice. I could drink it myself. You could. But then you'd be taking a gamble. Just guessing what amount was safe for your first dose. But then you like to gamble, don't you, Nelson? All right, then I won't. Look, why don't we just cut out all the fencing and just talk straight for a minute, all right? You don't like me because I married your daughter for her money, right? Your candor is refreshing. 
perfect. I'll admit I am not the perfect husband. If there's one thing I've got, it's a nose for a good deal. And when I get a hold of a deal like that, nobody on earth can stop me from making it happen. And this good deal is? We mass produce those melons in a, a string of hothouses. Then we'll market the enzyme a, as a muscle, miracle muscle energizer. <laughs> Christ, we'll be making money hand over fist. And you'll count it for me. Is that the idea? I'll be the company's general manager. I'll handle the legwork, I'll handle the advertising. You don't really have the savvy for that kind of job. You disgust me, Nelson. Do you think I'd give a damn about the money? I care about my daughter. Okay. Let's take a close look at your daughter. She's not likely to find another husband. Have you thought about who's gonna take care of her after you're gone and the inheritance money runs out? No. But I certainly wouldn't trust you in that role. I'm not asking you to. We can set up the company so a large chunk of the stock is in Sheila's name, not mine. You'd be giving your daughter a safety net for her old age. Thank you, dear. Well, have we got a deal? I'd sooner sign a pact with the devil than to go into business with you. I'll be in the hothouse if you need me. What are you and Mother talking about? I offered to help her set up a company to market that enzyme. I mean, you heard what she said. Not that I blame her, considering the way I treated the two of you. I'm sorry, I just... I lost my head. I didn't want to hurt you. I know you didn't mean to. I just, I just want everything to be perfect. Your mother doesn't understand that. And she never really accepted me. She will. She just needs time to get to know you. Things will work out. I know they will. Let's go see what your mother's up to. Never satisfied. No matter how much peat moss I give you, you just want more, more, more. Do you think I own the peat works or what? Here you go. Yeah. Honey, she's talking to her plant, for God's sake. Oh, you want some too, huh? Then. <laughs> Sweetheart, I think your mother's just getting a little too old to be making important decisions. Refusing to exploit those melons is a perfect example. We're just gonna have to take a few and, and grow them ourselves. Steal them? <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't. Look, I don't like having to go behind her back any more than you do. This is for us, honey. This is for our future. But but she'd hate me. She, she'd, she'd never speak to me again. Once she sees how successful that company's gonna be, she's gonna come right around. I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. I think we should sleep on.
French toast. Oh, Mother, you shouldn't have gone to the trouble. Nonsense, there's no trouble. Boy, it looks really wonderful, Mom. If you want breakfast, get it yourself. I'm going to do the morning watering. Just leave the dishes in the sink. I will. You gotta pick her brains about those worms. Ask her some indirect questions. I can't. She'll know we were in there last night. She'll guess why. I just can't do it. You know, if we can market that inside, we'll be able to do all the things we planned. We can get that little house in the country you like. It'd be a great place to raise a family. We don't have to wait anymore. And your mother would love grandchildren. You know she would. I guess I could talk to her. I'll get you some melon juice. Never mind, dear. I don't like to depend on it. Come here. I want to talk to you. When you were born, your father and I were already middle-aged, tenured at the university, set in our ways. Bugs and plants were all we ever cared about. We didn't know how to be parents, so we simply ignored you. It's in the past. Let's just forget about it. I don't want to forget it. I want to make amends and be a good mother to you. I'm going to start right now by trusting you. <gasps> what is it? Before he died, your father shipped a crate of these rare giant bloodworms back from his Amazon expedition. The crate broke and they escaped into the hothouse. Soon after that, the melons I was working on began to produce an unusual enzyme, the muscle energizer. The worms did that? Yes. I discovered that they chemically altered the soil, radically changed any plant that was grown in it. The melons are completely worthless without the worms. But they're so dangerous. I'm looking. Never mind how they look, child. They can change any plant species, not just the melons. Thousands of new, miraculous substances can be created. This is the gift I've been saving for you. My dear daughter, do you understand why I haven't told you until now? I didn't want a man like Nelson to get a hold of something so important. I love you so much. I love you too, Mother.
So let's go. You're going somewhere, Nelson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't need to hang around this dump any longer now that I know about your little secret. Your precious little girl told me. I knew she would. I planned it that way. Yeah. You know, there's no shame in it, dear. You were never a match for that monster. So, now you're trapped. <laughs> well, who's gonna trap me? You? I've drunk some of that juice now. Get out of my way, or I'll rip you in half. Leave her alone, Nelson. Sorry, love. But I don't need you anymore now that I have a breeding pair of these worms. You bastard. You used me. <laughs> Say that you love me. Lying through your teeth. You're not stealing worms, you idiot. You're taking her children. Her children. Never mess with the mother instinct. Library is not so bad. It's the only warm place in town. Oh, yeah, it's toasty. Except for that thing living upstairs. No, no more solace this time. I thought the old squirt here was going to go over and say hello to it. Grim Grim's talking again. He's up in the reading room. Huh. Got one weird kid there. Where she gets such a cutesy name for that monster anyway? And that her mother's Carl. Why don't you go over to the window, sweetheart, and uh, see if Venus has risen yet? But it's cloudy. It looked like it was clearing. Go see. doesn't know about her mother yet. Besides, I told you not to mention anything. I don't know what you told me, Mr. High School teacher. And let me tell you something. Her mother's dead, as dead as my father. And that's just something she's going to have to get used to. Pretty tough, aren't you? That's right. I'm tough. I was raised that way. My father. My use. 
thing's gonna pay. That damn thing is gonna pay. Maybe it was an accident. Came down more like a crash than a controlled landing. Accident, my butt! How much more proof do you need? It came down, it sealed off the town like it was some kind of ant for it. It infected us with a plague and then it sat there and watched us die. And everyone, everyone I knew in my entire life died. In one weekend, I couldn't do anything. I wish I could figure out what it was saying. I think we got a chance, huh? A couple more notches up. <laughs> and only, only the dogs could hear it. Continuing ship's log for Scout 426 Cube 3. Fourth local cycle since landfall. And learning much about these primitive aliens. Have hooked up power source to local library. Pursuing research into their writings and examining their dead. Had thought all in this locale wiped out but have recently sighted one or two survivors. They are in hiding and will not be easy to reach. They are frightened. <laughs> Library. Of all place. I never even visited it now. Now that I'm living here. And that monster's upstairs every day to boot. <laughs> At least we've got heat and light, and we've been able to sneak out for food. Yeah. Warm. <laughs> and well fed like... like lab rats. Once it finds us, <laughs> it's gonna want to see why its plague didn't work on us. <laughs> or maybe... Maybe it just wants to eat us. Daddy! Come see the snow. It's beautiful, darling. It is only a matter of time, but time is short. Their armies might find a means to pierce the force field before I am finished. Fortunately, the survivors cannot escape this village. I threw the force field up in time to contain all the inhabitants. So I must keep searching. Why us? How come we didn't get sick? I don't know. Something in our systems must have been able to resist the plague. But can we be the only ones left? You've seen the town. You know. Yes. Bodies everywhere. Next time we make a food run, I'm gonna get some firepower because I got scores to settle. I don't think that's such a good Shut idea. Shut up. I don't want any more of these. It might be an accident speeches because I don't buy that. Then try this. If the alien dies while that force field is up, it's just possible we could be sealed in this town forever with 7,000 corpses. <sighs> okay. So we've got to sit tight. Maybe help will come. Things could be worse. Power's out on the rest of town, but not here. We'd be frozen stiff by now if we hadn't found this place. If only there was something I could do to figure out what it was saying.
Ulan. Dangerous. Daddy, do you think Glim Glim came from the Pleiades? Oh, uh, we'll try to figure that out later, okay, honey? You sure it's gone? I'm sure. Look, we gotta find out what it's doing up there. It goes in and out day after day. It's up to something. And I want to know what. Okay, Amy. We're going out for more food. First, we're going to sneak a look upstairs in the library. You know what you're supposed to do now, don't you? Sure. As soon as I see Glim Glim coming, I run over to the vent and call him to you. Right. You got to keep a real careful watch, honey. We don't want to get caught upstairs by that monster. We don't want to be its next meal. Oh, don't worry. Glim Glim won't hurt you. <laughs> I give up. Just be a good lookout, sweetheart. I will, Daddy. God. This place looks like a cyclone here. It's real. It's a stink. Philosophy. Physiology. Anthropology, mythology, it's reading everything in the library. Yeah, I want to know all about us, I bet. Looking for better ways to kill us. What is that stink? I'm not so sure I want to know. Listen, maybe we should get going before it comes back. No, no, not so fast. It's learning an awful lot about us. About time we learn a thing or two about it. It's like my daddy said. A good hunter always knows its prey. Now come on, let's go. I know him. That's Harry Baker. Oh. It gets worse. Oh. Looks like my garage after me and my dad dressed a couple of bucks. Continuing ship's log for Scout 426 Cube 3. Fifth local cycle since crash landfall. Have identified the lethal pathogen. It is virus 6 square 9. Indigenous to our intestinal tracts, but obviously extremely deadly to these unfortunate aliens. Force field will fail soon due to dying batteries. Then virus will contaminate entire planet. Made contact late last cycle with a surviving native. A young female who does not fear me must pursue that contact, but cannot bring my voice down to levels she can understand. Must find other way. What took you so long? We had to wait outside. The alien was just leaving. We didn't want him to spot us. Where did you get those? Well, you were out looking for can openers. I paid a visit to Murphy's gun shop. That's the last time I run from that monster. Continuing ship's log for Scout 426 Cube 3. Night of fifth local cycle since crash landfall. Trying to find way to overcome the survivor's fear is of the utmost importance that they learn to trust me. The blood systems of these three have successfully produced antibodies to fight the six square nine virus. If I can duplicate their immunity, 
I will be able to save their race. I'm trying to learn to copy their markings, but with little success. Must search for another way. Personal note, the local moon is rising and snow is falling again. Reminds me of home. Long to be back with my younglings, but fear I shall never see them again. Is so tragic. All my fault. How will I bear the guilt of causing the death of an entire species? Would have to destroy myself. Hey, this is working great. You keep pointing and I'll keep writing. Okay. So far we've got that you're from Orion, that the sickness was an accident, and you need our help to make a medicine to save everybody else. But what can we do? B, L, O, O. You need blood? How much? L, I, T, a little? Okay, I... I guess I could help some, but it'll take an awful lot of convincing to get Carl and my dad to come around. Friend. No, they'll never believe. You'll have to show them. suppose he's been up to all day? <clears throat> I don't know. But he's certainly been busy. Yeah. Gone in and out at least a dozen times already. It almost sounds like... like he's building something. Well, I'm not going up to look, that's for sure. They gotta know you're a friend when they see that. Your handwriting's getting better. But... I did promise, didn't I? And it'll save the whole world, huh? Okay, but don't hurt me. Carl, let's go. Clap! 
Oh, it's got eight. Throw that up and fast it away. You still think this was an accident, huh? Give me your gun. Come on, I can't go out there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's doing something to her now. Oh, God. Come on, come on. Go, go, go. Where's Amy? What have you done with her? Give her back! Amy! Amy! Daddy, what was that noise? Amy! You're all right? I just plugged it in. Glinklin made it to show us he's our friend. It's the 24th. Christmas Eve. With all that's happened, I... We forgot. Daddy? Where's my friend Glinklin? Daddy? Please tell me you didn't hurt him. Daddy, you didn't hurt my friend Glim Glim, did you? 